No squirrel is safe. Des Elliott Smith has created the perfect setup for shooting them with his air gun. For guests like yourself, we have a welcome mat, sir. <laughs> How to use artificial intelligence to shoot a wild boar. Tim Pilbeam tours Pulsar's high-tech factories and tries out their kit on a pig. You know, the technology's there now. And we have another police firearms licensing basket case. The police service of Northern Ireland still hasn't got its act together after COVID and shooters are suffering. It's going to close a lot of businesses, small and large businesses. We have a competition for you to win tickets to the game fair priced at £300. David brings you the news on the news stump and James Martington has put together the best hunting and shooting videos in hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Three, two, one. When you are serious about pest control, you don't do things by halves. David Elliott Smith, or Des, and his mate Keith have built this luxurious hide in the grounds of the Oxford Gun Company where Des works. Nice door knocker. Just what you want when you go on a hunt squirrels. <laughs> well, you don't want to be disturbed. And, you know, for guests like yourself, we have a welcome mat, sir. Hot and cold running spiders, it's got everything in there. I suppose we spent about three hours doing it one afternoon, didn't we, putting it together? And it's, it's served the purpose really well. Brilliant. But uh, I'm still waiting for the, uh, the toilet and the, the sink to go in. I don't know what this bloke's hanging around at, really. We have to think about that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here in the winter, yeah, when I bring my little stove and, and make coffee and that. So, uh, yeah, coffee and porridge. They're using some serious air rifles too. This is mine, Epex Maverick in .22. This is sub-12. It's light, accurate, 18 shots to a mag, very quiet. With a hard WH day-night scope on it, so I can film whatever we're doing. And uh, yeah, love the thing. Same as Keith, it's an FX Maverick compact. Um, I've got a bigger moderator on it, it's a Donny FL moderator. And on the top, uh, the scope is a Sightmark Wraith 4K. Uh, same 18 shot magazine. I shall be shooting slugs out of this today because this is an FAC air rifle. This one's doing, I think with the slugs I'm using at the moment, about 39 to 40 foot pounds. So capable of taking a rabbit out quite easily at 60 yards. 20 metres in front of the hide, Des has set up a feeder which draws in the squirrels so he can get a clear, safe shot. You can get about six pounds of nuts in it. So it saves you keep going back every sort of day or so, you can get a good, good stash of nuts or whatever you're putting in as bait. Um, and we've put a little aluminium lid on the top of that, which is quite handy, because even when you're sat here, you can hear that lid clanging, and you know if there's, it's, it's like a, a bite detector for fishing, you know there's something about. So you could be doing something in the hide, not looking what's going on, hear that clang, and, and know you've got a visitor there. So it's quite a good little thing. It's a controlled method of knowing where they're going to be, where we're shooting is safe, behind the area that we're shooting at, so we know what's behind where our pellets are going to go, so it's completely safe. Uh, and we're not just shooting up into the trees either, so yeah, they're always going to come to us. Right, so this is what we're using in, in the feeder. So normal sort of black sunflower seeds, um, peanuts, these aren't for human consumption, so they are bird food. And also in there, just to bulk it up, is some milled corn that I got from one of the farms that I shoot um, for. So that's all it is, um, relatively cheap if you buy them in bulk. So just by gauging what you can see on the trail camera and how much of this stuff goes missing, you, you can work out whether it's worth going. I think we've, we've probably not shot this for five, six weeks, I think, have we? So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of youngsters there. Controlling the squirrels is a never-ending job. In the past 18 months, Des has killed more than 150 on this small patch of woodland alone. They keep coming. Think of the woodland and the small birds he's saved. They breed like rats, funnily enough, they are rats, and they're just constantly breeding. Um, and it's just a threat to our native songbirds, which are supposed to be here. Everybody likes to hear the birds singing first thing in the morning, me included. And it's because of those little grey creatures over there stripping the nests that the songbird population. When was the last time you saw a song thrush? I can't remember seeing a song thrush. Um, and it's, it's birds like that, blackbirds, blue tits especially, long-tailed tits, 
that's the prey that the squirrel will, will go on. We have been waiting for an hour and only seen a handful of squirrels. Suddenly, the thermal reveals a whole group arriving at once. Des and Keith swing into action. The shooting looks simple, but there's a knack to getting the timing right. This one ducks at just the wrong moment, and Des's slug slams into the aluminium plate where its head had been just a fraction of a second earlier. Straight in the head. Timing is... The, that's, that's the beauty of having a, a feeding station, because the squirrel will probably get a bit jittery if there's others about, but as soon as he's got the nut in his hand, he'll quite happily sit there as good as gold. That's the time to shoot. It's very easy to rush a shot and they're just going to move. But wait until he's got the food in his hands and you know, you, you've got all the time you want then. But always at the head, either right in the front of the head or on the side of the head. Um, I've noticed if you shoot them smack bang between the eyes at the front of the head, they drop like a stone and don't move. Hit them in the side of the head, they tend to dance around a lot on the floor with nerves. People think it's, it's not being killed, but you, I can assure you, it's, it's definitely dead, it's just the nerves. Two, four, six, seven, and we think there's another couple that we haven't found yet over in the woods. The one came uh, and then it all went quiet for half an hour and then they all came together. But they all come at once like a bus, isn't it? The thermal spotter is, is a, you know, it's, it's gold dust or something like this because you cannot see something gray and again, it's a grey background. Uh, height Micro. So I've, I've got a Falcon. Yours is a Lynx yeah. LH19, yeah. I think, isn't that? No, 15. 15. We've got a mixture of boys and girls, so um, that's cleared, cleared the woods out for a little bit anyway. You can find Des on YouTube. Look for Predator Protection UK, link below. And to track down any of the kit featured in this film, go to kitfinder.co.uk. Thank you, Des and Keith. Now, this week's prize draw is for tickets to the Game Fair, which takes place at Ragley Hall in Warwickshire on the weekend of the 28th to the 30th of July 2023. You will find me there in the Cartagena's Game Fair Theatre, which I run for them as a three-day chat show with guests, including Field Sports Channel regulars and angling superstar Paul Whitehouse and top chef James Martin. The Game Fair has all the usual attractions, including gunmakers and gamekeepers' rows. We have five pairs of tickets to give away, priced at £300 in total. If you don't want to win a pair, there's a link to the website below. If you do want to win a pair, easiest way to enter the competition is to join the Field Sports Nation and watch their special Tuesday night show, Field Sports Extra. Link to that below too. Don't forget, we have Jack Pike rucksacks to give away to new members in July. You pay £50 for the membership, £4.99 for the postage, and we send you a canvas bag plus goodies such as Gunlock and Field Sports Channel Beanie, totaling £45 worth of kit. It's a steal. Next, lives in trees, little twitchy nose and lots of grey fur. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, has visited Basque's headquarters in her new role as patron. The Princess Royal met Basque staff, council members and guests at Marford Mill in Rosset. During her visit, she launched the new Basque Wildlife Fund, which provides grants for conservation projects and loans for land purchase. She also learned about Basque's duck nest tube project and watched a gun dog demonstration. Basque staff showed the Princess Royal the Duke of Edinburgh building that her father opened in 2010. The Duke of Edinburgh was Basque's patron for more than half a century, up to his death in 2021. The latest figures show more firearms and shotgun certificates were revoked in the last 12 months than ever before. Basque's head of firearms, Martin Parker, says the reason for the record numbers is almost certainly the introduction of statutory guidance on suitability checks of certificate holders in 2021. Across England, Wales, police revoked 418 firearm certificates in 2022 to 2023, up from 385 the year before. 
George Digweed has claimed another World Championship title. George won the 45th World Fitask Sporting Championship. He took the overall and senior titles on a score of 186, also winning the Beretta World Cup. In April 2022, George, who started shooting at the age of 12, became the first sportsman to win world titles in five different decades when he won the Sporting World Championship. His latest wins brings his world titles to 32 world titles, four European compact titles and 12 World Cups. He has dominated the world of sporting and fitask shooting across five decades. He's also a keen pheasant, pigeon and fox shooter. More great news for British shooters and Nathan Hales has won his first World Cup trap gold. He battled heat and fierce competition at the ISSF World Cup in Italy to take his place on the podium. In qualification, he finished in first place with 123 out of 125, with teammate Aaron Heading close behind, with a qualification score of 122. Nathan kept up his incredible performance in the final to drop just one target to end on 49 out of 50. Uh, yeah, the, the Chinese guy was uh, pushing me all the way, so I knew I couldn't afford to I thought to take my foot off the gas, I just kept focused and kept going all the way to the end. A motion to ban trail hunting by North Yorkshire councillors is anti-rural and a colossal waste of time. That's the view of the Countryside Alliance, which adds that the attempt to ban trail hunting on land owned by North Yorkshire Council would do nothing to help animal welfare and everything to fuel prejudice against rural communities. Ten hunts take part in lawful trail hunting activities across North Yorkshire, as well as local councils, antis from 30 animal rights groups are targeting national park leaders in England and Wales in a new campaign to end trail hunting. They have formed the new Time for Change coalition against hunting. Two top clay shooters have been found dead at the clay ground they ran in Lincolnshire. Police named the couple as Rob and Rose Jobson of the White Lodge Shooting School. Rose was the 1998 British all-round ladies champion and she won a team silver with England at the World Shooting Championships in New Zealand in 2002. Rob had also represented England and had more than 50 years coaching experience. Humberside Police, which has launched a murder investigation, confirms it's not looking for anyone else in relation to their deaths. A cross-party group of MPs say the government should pay farmers compensation for beaver damage. The MPs say existing arrangements for reintroducing species such as beavers, lynx and bison to the UK were completely inadequate and overly bureaucratic. The first wild beavers in England for centuries were spotted in Devon in 2014 after an unauthorised release. The National Farmers Union and Country Land and Business Association are calling for compensation as land can be flooded because of damage caused by beavers. The conservation industry wants Scotland's deer dead. A new report commissioned by the Woodlands Trust Scotland says that deer numbers are one of the biggest threats to the survival and expansion of what it calls Scotland's rainforest. It says that Scottish government fencing is expensive and doesn't work. It wants local communities to do their own deer stalking and to use drones with thermal cameras to find deer. The Scottish Government is already planning to remove the season for stags and to roll out night shooting of deer. A hike in land prices thanks to government cash for carbon capture schemes is seeing big estates come to market. Dunbeath Castle in Scotland is up for sale for offers over £25 million. The Clifftop Castle has 13 bedrooms and the estate has 28,500 acres of grouse and pheasant shooting, deer stalking, fishing, a farm and is suitable, says Agent Savills, for a peatland restoration project. Meanwhile, Agent Knight Frank wants £35 million for the Rothbury estate. The sporting estate owned by the Percy family for 700 years is, says the agent, the single largest ring-fenced carbon offsetting opportunity to come to the open market in England for decades. The Hunt Kennels on the estate is already looking for new premises. And finally, the US has caught and killed its longest ever Burmese python. The Southwest Florida Conservancy says the 19-foot-long Burmese python is a new record holder. The snake, which weighed 125 pounds, is part of a booming population of escaped pets that is eating its way through the rest of Florida's wildlife. Jake Wallery and his friends faced a fight to wrangle it. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.
Thank you, David. And we will go and buy him some more nuts if you click like below this film. Next up, a word from Scott Country about the game fair. Visit Scott Country International at the Game Fair this July and try out the latest thermal and night vision from Infrared, Zeiss, Pulsar, Hick Micro and more. We look forward to seeing you there. Now let's go Baltic. It was months in the making. It's got bore, it's got tech, it's got Tim Pillbeam. It is our Pulsar factory film promo. This is a plug for the half-hour film about Pulsar that we put out on YouTube this week. In an exclusive look behind the glass, we get to see Pulsar's past, present and future. Just hold on. Let me go check what's on the monitor. Okay, you stay here, you wait. <laughs> A bit precious, these guys. If you have the slightest interest in thermal and night vision, this <laughs> is the film for you. Pulsar products are used all over the world for a host of applications. Hunting and wildlife management, of course. Search and rescue, film work, science. Pulsar has been instrumental in putting amazing technology into the hands of the consumer. As part of our visit to three production sites in Lithuania and Latvia, Tim Pilbeam learns about new products and how artificial intelligence will play its part in our hunting futures. He witnesses how the war in Ukraine has changed Pulsar's business, the life of its employees and their families. He also gets to test the kit on the range before hunting a Latvian wild boar at night at range. Only a few years ago, that would have been impossible with a thermal scope. You know, the technology is there now. There's a link to the film below. Now, if you liked that, you can watch Tim's full Pulsar experience and nocturnal hunting exploits by clicking on the link to it in the description below. Next, it's all very well having this lovely new kit to put on your rifle, but not if you don't have a rifle to put it on. And there's a failure at lots of local constabularies to run good quality firearms licensing. Deborah Hadfield reports from Northern Ireland. Shooting is more than a pastime for these shooters in Northern Ireland. For some, it's a mainstay in their lives. But some members of the Denny Bow Target Club are struggling because of the crisis in firearms licensing. Paul Jennings is one of around 3,000 people waiting for a certificate. He took a break from shooting as he was in a wheelchair waiting for a lung transplant. After his operation, he's returned to the sport he loves. But he's been waiting almost six months for his certificate. Very important to me because uh, prior November, I was in a wheelchair for nearly four years. I couldn't really walk or do anything. And I had an operation removing half of my left lung. So now I'm able to get it a small bit, so to get back out shooting again and doing things that I love doing, it's great. For some of the members here at the Dunny Bow Target Club, shooting isn't just a hobby. It's an absolute lifeline when other things in their life, like bad health, are causing them issues. Well, up until a few years ago, we, we both Paul and myself, would have been out the fields shooting vermin and things like that there. Now the condition that we're in, we can't do that. So this is, this is the club to be in, for, as far as we're concerned, because you've got good freedom, great people. Like myself and Paul, that, uh, we, we'll come up here most nights, and as you can see, it's quiet at night, you know. Most boys haven't got their licenses through. It's soul destroying. It's very irritating at times, no, and you can't phone up anybody, they ask, no, what, is there any hold up or anything, because they won't answer you no more. No, it's all computerised, so you just have to sit back and you can't do nothing about it. Police in Northern Ireland announced a critical incident with firearms licensing more than a year ago. That means for shops like this, people can buy guns, but they can't collect them because they're waiting up to 14 months for a license. For Tommy Beatty, the delays are crippling his business. The delay in the situation is very frustrating to customers and ourselves. Uh, we carry a big, big stock of guns, lots of money tied up, and we like to get them in and out through the door as quick as possible to get our money back. It is extremely frustrating for all firearms holders. It's all right if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one off, um, which can be done over the counter, but anything that requires something going through to firearms branch, you, you just, in 
Pandora's box. You just don't know when it's going to come, what queries they're going to come back with, or uh, if it's going to go to senior licensing. And if it goes to senior licensing, we've had cases of over 14 months and even more complex cases that we dealt with that we had to take to other bodies outside the, the, the PSNI that took three years. Some gun shops are struggling because of the restrictions of the ministerial code. That means they can only store a limited amount of rifles and handguns. Yeah, I'm small and I'm sitting on my limit and I can't get the members more guns or another gun if they want to change because I can't bring it in because I'd still be sitting. My stock doesn't go down with the one on, one off. And you've got to try and sell a second hand gun then before you can bring in a new gun. And it's just not. It's not a nice way to do trade. You can't do trade like that. The PSNI receives more than 17,000 firearms applications each year. It says it has developed a plan which will see an increase in the resources within the branch and has invested in a new IT system. It says it's committed to continuing to upgrade the system to improve efficiency in handling applications. We fear that there are still more difficult cases to come and again with the police service of Northern Ireland uh, having critical cuts to their budgets uh, where they say that the, the service won't be delivered as quickly and it will be a totally unrecognisable service, um, that they will take the civil servants that are doing the firearms licensing to fill all their operational gaps, which will only make businesses such as Tommy's here um, suffer. Tommy started this shop more than 40 years ago. He's grown it to the success it is today but he's increasingly facing challenges with firearms licensing delays and also the difficulty of getting ammunition across the Irish Sea. At the moment, it is a nightmare to get across that Irish Sea. It is a nightmare. We put our order in. As soon as we get a load in, we put an order in. It used to be you could have had it, uh, your cartridges within a week. Now it's taken maybe up to three months. And the price of a load of stuff to come in now, it used to be you got a load in for around £1,000 plus the VAT, now it's costing in around £3,500 plus VAT. They would need to get something done about it and get the SRC sorted out because it's going to close a lot of businesses, small and large businesses. People like Tommy say so that government is treating shooters and gun shops poorly. You have some people in government is for shooting and a lot of people is anti-shooting. We've been treated very, very bad. He's lost his passion for his business, which is something we want to do. We, you know, we want uh, businesses to thrive in local communities and we want uh, the, the shooting community to be able to continue. I think, well, it'll be a matter for the police to, to sort out firearms licensing and they need to give the resources to get it back on the even keel. For shooters like Paul, the improvements can't come quickly enough. Until he gets his certificate, he will continue to rely on his friends to continue the sport he loves. Thanks all who took part in that. Now from paperwork to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Martinson, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First this week, Christopher Clausen is hunting seals on the coast of Sweden. They make difficult targets, bobbing in the water with just the heads showing, and recovering the carcasses is challenging too. Multiple world champion George Digweed teams up with Johnny Carter from TGS Outdoors at the West London Shooting School to try out the Aimpoint Red Dot Shotgun sight on a variety of clay targets, with plenty of advice from the master on things like lead and swing. Here's Andy Crow tackling some stunning parts cartridges in Morocco in the second of a two-parter from Jack Pike. It's got impressive shooting, great hospitality and breathtaking scenery. Blake Wish goes hunting with the cheapest PCP air rifle he can get on Amazon. He's in the States and you can do that there. It doesn't start well when the package falls out of his truck as he's driving home, but he manages to hit a few starlings before inexplicably pumping it full of water and shooting it with a 1.7 HMR. Moocher's Ways is catching rabbits with a long net at night, a traditional method that was popular with poachers in days gone by and is still 
still just as effective today. David from Predator Protection UK has come up with a cunning way of keeping his channel going while he waits for a hip replacement. He's asked his subscribers to send in clips of themselves shooting. This one is from Johnny Allen, shooting squirrels and a bonus fox. Carl Bantock wants to clear out the foxes on the estate before his pults go into the pens. He's out at night with his Seiko 243 and an infrared thermal scope. And finally this week, here's the story of how hunters played a crucial part in bringing back the Spanish ibex from the brink of extinction, from a population of just 20 at the end of the 19th century to more than 6,000 today. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email charlie the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.